I too would like to welcome all of us as we come here to worship God and to feel his presence. Uh, it is a very, very cold day out there, but we don't have to worry about that because, well, we're going to get a foot of snow too. So, uh, so <laughs> why be concerned about the cold, right? <laughs> No, uh, it's great that all of us are here. I'd like to uh, thank everyone who was able to show up in person. Those of you that are in our our parking lot, we always have some that that are in the parking lot listening and many of those that are listening online. So I'd like to welcome everyone as we come and we worship God. I'd like to begin by just going over some of the uh, the ministry opportunities we have. We always have a a different mission that we spend this month. Today is our United Methodist uh, Committee on Relief, we refer to that as UMCOR, uh, through specifically the Tornado Relief Fund. They've been down there and we're, we're helping out with those. Uh, also, the food pantry is going to be the 25th and 26th, and they are returning to in-person and, and people being able to come in and, and, and get their own food. So we're really hoping that's going to work out well, too. Uh, youth group is continuing to meet. They'll meet uh, this evening from 6 to 7.30. So I'd like to encourage any of the kids to, uh, to continue to be a part of that. Uh, also, just kind of a, a plug out there. We, we need someone or people that would like to assist, if they could, uh, with our sound and media on Sunday morning. So if you're interested uh, in learning some of those things, uh, Tim's great at teaching people on the uh, 32 channel mixing board that we have for the sound and working with the uh, pro presenter and the slides and that that we have with the media side. So if you're interested in that, just let us know. Uh, We would love to have some backup uh, and and some people uh, who would really like to learn from there. And You don't have to have any background knowledge. If you would just be interested, they'll walk you through the whole thing. Uh, And the last thing, uh, today, this afternoon, with uh, this being Martin Luther King weekend, there there is the Youngstown uh, Martin Luther King worship service. Uh, They have decided, because of the variant, and so many people were still sick, they had decided this here a week or so ago, uh, that they are just going to go virtual. So it's not going to be in person, but it will be virtual. And all you would have to do if you would like to follow that is go on to the Youngstown Martin Luther King uh, Facebook page and you can follow. Uh, I felt honored to be asked to give the opening invocation at that service. So uh, I'll be doing that virtually. I'll be doing that online, but uh, we will all be together. So I really promote that we would be a part uh, uh, of of that service. Okay, as we move forward, this is uh, a special day for us uh, in that uh, we follow two sacraments. Sacrament is something ordained by God, uh, scripturally. Uh, Those sacraments are communion and baptism. And today we have a baptism. Uh, And we have a set of twins that are coming up. So I would like to uh, invite, if we could... Uh, both Tara and Nicholas, and for them to bring Crew and Knox uh, and to join us down front here uh, for our baptismal ceremony. And as they are getting the kids ready to come up, I'll just kind of give us a, a heads up. Uh, the ceremony will be on the, uh, on the screen. So uh, uh, please follow along uh, as you will. Right now you're seeing me on the screen, okay. Uh, you won't see me shortly uh, after they come up. Uh, we will be following uh, the, the, the ceremony. Yeah, see, you can see yourself if you wave, huh? Uh, <laughs> And there's a ceremony, but if you guys would even just, you could follow along up there. That's easier than than trying to hold a piece of paper. (laughs) Okay. So I would like to invite all of us now, if we could, to focus our attention on the screen and be able to share together in this holy sacrament. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I now present Crew John Ferrant and Knox Richard Ferrant for baptism. So now I ask the two of you, 
on behalf of the whole church. I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And will you nurture crew and Knox in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. And now I ask the congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include crew and Knox before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Crew and Knox with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for Crew and Knox that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. I invite all of us to join together in this. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, and there will be response in this prayer. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw the people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. Then in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and crew and Knox who receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Please bring your... Children forward. This is crew. Okay. We're, I'm just going to move it up a little. Can we do that? Can we just move it up a little? Okay. And you have named him Crew John? Yes. Crew John Fair, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Throw that back down. You did so well. Yeah.
such great And Knox, let's see if you can hold your own too, okay? And what name have you given? Knox Richard. Knox Richard Ferret. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wait here, if you would, please. Now may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is our joy to welcome our new brothers in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. And now I share this to all members of the household of God. I commend Crew and Knox to your love and care. Do all in your power. Increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you. And we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And now... Do you as a congregation accept the responsibility of assisting Nicholas and Tara and do you undertake to provide facilities and opportunities for the Christian nurture and fellowship? We will, we will by the grace of God. Okay, now before I give the closing benediction, just one thing to add. We just made a covenant that we're going to help the two of them. That means... As they get a little bit older and they're running around like wild banshees because I had kids that age and that's exactly what they do. We're going to share love and grace with them. Then when they get older and they see us possibly at a football or basketball game and the ref makes a bad call, we're actually going to act Christ-like. Because that's the vow we just took. And if we don't, we just broke that vow. I take vows seriously. I take vows seriously. We just took a vow that we would help raise them in the Christian faith. Let's make sure we do that. Not just for an hour on Sunday. It's easy to dress up. I don't look anywhere near as cute as they. But it's easy to dress up, right? But to live it out. That's what we're talking about. Let's make sure we assist them. It's not easy. Let's make sure we assist them in growing in the Christian faith. Now may we hear the closing benediction. May the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Here's their baptismal ceremony. Thank you and, very much. and congratulations. Thank you. And congratulations. Yeah, I know. I'll let you go back. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. And at this time, as they're getting seated, I'd like to invite any of the kids in our congregation to meet me down front, and we will join together in our children's sermon. Sure, if you guys want to come down. You can, you can go on together if you want. You don't have to, yeah. <laughs> Hi, man. Well, good. Everybody doing well? Me too. Me too. Me too. I had a had a had a good week. How many? You, you looking forward to snow? Yeah. 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 Snow's fun, isn't it? Yeah. It is. It is. Well, today. It, in the sermon, I'm going to be talking about something that Jesus did. He
he did a miracle. And the miracle, the very first miracle was he turned water into wine. Okay? Just had one thing and turned it into another. Now, for Jesus, that wasn't really a big deal. And we might not think that's a huge miracle. But you know what's really important about it is that that was a need that somebody had, and he met that need. Now, you know, we all have things that we worry about or issues that we have, huh? You know, if you're in school, you you have things that you do or whatever. Well, you know, Jesus loves us that much that he cares about all of our needs, not just the great big ones, but even the little ones. That's what we learn in, in, in in this parable, in this miracle that Jesus did, that he cares about all of us. Did you know that? He does. He loves every single one of us that much and cares about all of our needs. So when we're having any problems or anything, we can pray and he will listen because he loves us that much to always care for us. So how about we bow our heads and say a little prayer now. Can we do that? Dear God, we thank you so very, very much for always loving us and always caring about each and every one of our needs. And now, Heavenly Father, help us to remember that we can always turn to you and talk with you because you care for us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. You guys can either go back to your seat or head downstairs. Yeah, bye-bye. As the kids are heading back, we'll continue in our, our time of worship with our, our praise and, 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 and prayer. Obviously, one of the praises is being able to have a baptism. That's always a joyous time in the life of the church that we can share in that love together. Uh, also, uh, a, a very good news I'd lifted up. Uh, last week about the Arnado family coming down with COVID and it actually hit Connie the hardest uh, and she has been bouncing back and is feeling much more like herself. Still has some congestion and uh, uh, it, it, it's been over two weeks now so uh, it, it's, been, it's been hard but she never had to be hospitalized and we feel very, very fortunate for that. And then of course I would be remiss even though I mentioned it uh, earlier about the uh, uh, the, the service uh, that, that we're having. Uh, to, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this being Martin Luther King Day uh, weekend. One of the things that I have always admired, and I've read, I think, just about everything Martin Luther King has written, one of the things that I admire is his concept of nonviolence. Um, I find that so admirable and so very difficult to follow through on. I really do. But it's really the way of Christ. Um, And we are not in that as a country or as a world at all right now. Um, We move straight from being okay to hatred. it, it, It just seems to be that way. Uh, And hatred at any cost. I really highly recommend reading Martin Luther King um, and, and seeing where he was coming from because it really was a scriptural base of Christ. Uh, he was a preacher. And that's how he lived. And I, I, I think we have gotten so, so much into controversy that we overlook his sayings. We overlook his message. Um, And I think we've overlooked it for way too long. We need to move into that. We we truly do. We truly do. Uh, Those are are difficult things. But we can get there. Uh, We can get there. Let's work at it. Just as I mentioned that we have to be examples for the kids, we need to be examples for the world. Um, So when we leave here, no matter what we do, let's be loving. And when that snow comes, if we can help somebody out, let's help them. Uh, You know, whatever it might be, let's make sure we are there for one another and for all people. 
That's, that, that's a key. That's a key. So at this time, I would like us to uh, take a few moments for silent meditation. I will move into pastoral prayer and invite us if we would join together then in the Lord's Prayer. Can we bow our heads for a brief moment of silent prayer? Gracious Lord, I, I thank you so very, very much for being with all of us. And Lord, I, I specifically pray right now for Crew and Knox that they may continue to grow in, in, in good health, continue to grow in, in, in good spirits, and to continue to grow in your love and grace. Lord, may they feel that love and grace at all times. May they know that that grace means that that undeserved forgiveness. And see, it's so important to know that because that's the only way we can ever forgive ourselves. And Lord, we want that for all of us and for them. Continue to also be with Tara and Nicholas as, as they raise them. And to be with all of us in our relationships with family and friends. Lord, none of us are perfect. And some days, unfortunately, we, we prove that all too well. But Lord, help us to truly live our lives with love and that undeserved forgiveness, that grace, each and every day. And now, Heavenly Father, may we say the prayer together that your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus, taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you, if you're uh, in the sanctuary with us, to please stand, if you're able, for our opening hymn. This, uh, this hymn is one of my favorites. It's Great is Thy Faithfulness, and it's actually perfect. I had no idea there was going to be a baptism today, but it's a, it's a perfect segue because uh, I think a, a baptism is a really great reminder of God's provision throughout our entire lives. Um, so let's sing this song and think about how God has met our needs in all ways. Changes not thy come. 
presence to cheer and to guide. Hear this. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Amen. Blessings all mine with ten thousand The scripture that I'll be sharing from briefly here this morning is taken from the gospel according to St. John in the second chapter, verses 1 through 11. And if we could listen and follow along to these words. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Now, Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, do do you involve me? Jesus replied, "My, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing. Now each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to be up to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone who brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed him. We've all heard the story of Jesus turning water into wine. Believers, non-believers alike, everybody's heard the story. Whether we feel it's a miracle, magic, whatever, everybody's heard of it. Now, for those of us who do believe, we need to ask ourselves, why did Jesus do it? And, And what's it actually mean? Well, what I'd like to do is begin by looking at the story in its entirety. We see that Jesus, his mother, and all the disciples were present. Now, that's significant. It's significant because before the disciples were a group, they probably didn't even know each other. I mean, they were in different professions. They probably hung out. They were in different kind of groups. And yet they were all invited to this wedding. That lets us know this wedding was a big deal. This was a big wedding. This was a wedding that everybody was invited to. No matter what your walk, you were there. All were there to celebrate the love of two people and then the fellowship that they had following. What a great place for Jesus to kick off the first miracle of his ministry with that type of love present. And that's exactly what he did. Now, we have to remember that the wedding reception would go on for days. Okay, this this was truly a celebratory time. So it wasn't just like an evening reception that we might have. This went on for days. And Jesus knew this. And then on the third day, they ran out of wine. So Mary, now you have to remember, this is Jesus' mom, wasn't involved in the wedding at all. Didn't have anything to do with the prep. But she felt bad. She obviously knew the family. They ran out of wine. So she goes to Jesus. 
says, hey, they, they've got no more wine. Now, think about that. What do you think she expected Jesus to do? I mean, we really have no idea. We can't understand it, but she may not even have known what she expected him to do. But she knew by that point that her son was special. And if anyone could save this embarrassing situation, it would be him. So Mary didn't hesitate. She didn't have to think twice. She immediately went to Jesus for help. Now, I'm pretty certain that if others had overheard the request that Mary had for Jesus, they'd have thought she was nuts. I mean, think about it. Jesus was a carpenter. He knew nothing about vineyards, nothing about grapes, nothing about wine. He wasn't a merchant. He didn't know where to buy it. He didn't know where to get it. He didn't have any background. How in the world would this small-town carpenter have any idea how to get wine? They would have thought she was nuts. Mary may not have known how Jesus was going to fix the problem, but she knew in her heart that he would. And even though it wasn't time for people to grasp the concept of Jesus as the Messiah, and Jesus himself knew this and even stated it, now was not the time, it was the time for him to begin the process of showing people his love, his authority, and his power. So to Jesus, you see, turning the water to wine was nothing. I mean, he's God, right? So they, you know, God made water, God made wine. It, it, that in and of itself was not a big deal. But the symbolism behind it was a big deal. For it shows us Jesus' character. Running out of wine on the third day of a wedding celebration was embarrassing, but it wasn't really a life or death situation on a scale of problems that they would have had in that time especially, it didn't rank too high. So why did Jesus bother himself with it? Why did it even matter? Well, see, he's showing us that he cares about all of our needs, the huge ones and the small ones, even the minor embarrassing ones. He loves us that much. So the real question here then is, do we believe like Mary and trust that Jesus will follow through whenever we ask? That's really the big question posed here. You see, Mary saw a problem and didn't know how to fix it. She went to Jesus. She didn't know how he would fix it, but she knew he would. Not because it was critical, but because he has that much love. That's the real point of this miracle. The water to wine really isn't the issue. That's what people always talk about or even joke about. But that's not it. It's that Mary trusted that Jesus would get it done and that Jesus was willing to do it. And not just turn the water to wine, but the best wine ever. You see, it's all about trust. Trusting Jesus, and knowing in our hearts that he loves us enough to meet our needs. Doesn't mean we won't have problems. We're going to have problems. Jesus isn't a genie in a bottle. It's not something that we do say, oh, I'm having a problem. You know, let me rub my Bible three times, get on my prayers, and I get three wishes. No, it doesn't work like that. That's not it. Sometimes the rind the wine runs out, right? But he's always going to be there no matter what the outcome. You see, we don't know what happened on day number four or day number five of that ceremony. Maybe they ran out of wine again. We don't know. That's not the point of it. It's that he cares that much. Now, this sounds simplistic, but it can really be difficult for us to put into practice. It can we tell a personal story. When I was in my mid-30s, I tore my ankle badly, just being goofy in the backyard with my kids. 
on crutches for six and a half weeks. I was told I may never run competitively again. Now, for those of you who know me, I was a runner, ran in high school, ran in college, run marathons. To be told I might never run again, that was a big deal for me, especially in my, my mid-30s. Now, I did everything I was supposed to do. I went to the physical therapy. I, I did it all. But, you know, I almost felt guilty for praying for a miracle because I was able to function. And if, so what if I couldn't run again? That's not that big a deal. I was dealing with people with so many other big issues. It's like, how dare I bother God? Isn't that amazing? I should know better. But I, I, I still felt that. Now, my heel, my, my healing did occur. My ankle was healed. I was able to run. I've run marathons since. Not that I plan on any, running anymore at this point in my life, but I was running them then. And the next summer, that's when I was approached by that group of peddling parsons and said, hey, would you like to, you know, Ken, he'd been after me for a couple of years, and I would run with this fellow and said, you know, why don't you join? And I said, you know what, I'm going to. I came back and told Becky, I'm joining a, a, a cycling group that we're going to ride 500 miles in six days to raise money for missions. She said, you don't even own a bike. I said, that's okay. I, I, we can do this. And I've been doing it ever since. I don't know why God healed my ankle, but I figure at least I could do something positive with it besides just take that advantage and run. Now, See, when I tell stories like that, it, it sounds great because there's the happy ending, right? You know, they had the wine. My ankle was healed. But that's not always the case. And even with me, yeah, my ankle was healed, but I had to have surgery on a rotator cuff over 20 years ago, and, and I still don't have full usage of that. I had to have surgery for a herniated disc in my back, and that has limited some of the things that I can do. You know, and I've prayed, why, why didn't God heal the rest of those things? He healed the ankle. It's like, come on, God, you put me together, fix it. Well, it just doesn't always work like that. So am I thankful that the ankle, yeah. Am I thankful that the surgeons that I believe God gave the wisdom to that worked both on my shoulder and my back did a great job and I'm able to still function? Absolutely. But sometimes it's not always the way we want, but I know that he cares about me. All of the problems. And I have to constantly be reminding myself that. And we need to remind each other that. And that's the thing. What about us? When problems arise, big or small, and let's face it, they always do. Problems are always coming up. Do we trust Jesus enough to take it to him knowing that he will assist? Not that life will be perfect. It, it's not perfect for any of us. But do we know that he will be there? That he cares about us that much? Or do we try to do it on our own? That's a temptation all of us have. Well, I can fix this. It's like, eh, boy, I don't know how many times I've said that. How many times have all of us said that? Sometimes we can without even realizing God was helping us along the way. But you see, ultimately we come to realize that we need something more. We actually need that love and that care and that power of Christ. And we need to know that he loves and cares for us enough to always be there. So let's learn from Mary and from Jesus that we can take all of our joys and our sorrows to him. And he's always going to be there for us. Can we bow in prayer? Gracious Lord, and you are gracious. You, you do love and, and forgive us so much. I, I know that in my case. Lord, I, I thank you for always being there and help me to always remember that I can trust you for the big and the small. And help all of us here, Lord, to recognize that. You will be there for us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Those who are in the sanctuary to stand if you're able for our closing hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. Temptations is the trouble anywhere. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in Thy friends despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee, thou wilt find a solace there. I think that him, maybe for some of us, in modern day is a, is a little bit much. Do your friends despise you? Probably not. You should maybe get new friends if your friends despise you. But uh, I think what it's trying to show is, is that no matter what's going on in our life, uh, even when things seem upside down, when the people that are supposed to be supporting us, our friends are despising us, God is there with us. Every time that Jesus heals somebody in the Gospels, um, or almost every time, he says, your faith has healed you because you trust in the power of God to heal, you have been healed. Uh, and so I, my prayer for us this week as we go out into our lives is to have that trust, uh, have that trust in God's goodness and in his grace that it's coming to us all the time. Uh, amen. Go in his peace.